I was using the phrase, you know, abortion is murder routinely in my preaching, my speaking, the interviews I gave to media uh, in my general conversation, private and public. And yet at the same time, when I looked at the numbers that somebody alluded to earlier, I can't remember, 25% of American women, I was nagged by a question. Are 25% of American women guilty of murder? They are murderers? Mm -hmm. It doesn't comport with reason. It's not a reasonable conclusion. And after all, it's God who invites us to reason together. Come, let us reason together, says mm -hmm. the Lord. And sometimes I would broach those kinds of questions in our discussions and, and strategy meetings. And I remember being told uh, in one meeting, uh, that's not going to help us. Uh, we're not raising those kinds of questions. We're not asking those kinds of questions. That's not going to help our cause. So there came a time for me where I realized the political cause, the political objective, the political victories were far more important than any of the people involved in the equation or the crisis of abortion. Can I offer something yeah. here just briefly? And, and again, uh, it comes from my, these days, my uh, posthumous mentor, uh, dear Dietrich, behind me here, uh, who said, Jesus was consummately the man for others, the one for others, for the other. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, in my third conversion, I had to face what was happening inside my wing of evangelicalism and the pro-life movement more specifically, mm -hmm. where we were forgetting the other. We were forgetting that this whole question was about the other, mm -hmm. about the child, about the mother, about uh, the people that surrounded them or had abandoned them in many cases. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the dehumanization, the depersonalization of all of this that's really at the heart of the question. Because for me, the worst people you can insert into this equation are politicians, judges, law enforcement. And this is why I've shifted my position on Roe v. Wade, only because what Roe v. Wade and, and, and the enterprise that was built around it did was it gave an invitation to introduce all of those players who will use the crisis of abortion for their own advantage. And in doing that, they dehumanize every person involved, including the unborn child. So for me, this isn't really a question about whether the unborn child is, is sacred, but whether all the other persons involved are equally sacred. So when you turn the unborn child into what we used to call a cause platform for a fundraising letter, for a convening, uh, for voter mobilization. It, it's not really about the personhood of that child. It's about their utility, mm -hmm. their usefulness to us, which is depersonalizing yeah. that unborn child. So for me, that's consummately a question of faith and the definition of the gospel, which is all about the other.